In this video, we're talking about how you can get better at editing super quick using this technique that I'm about to show you. When you first start out editing with Resolve and making videos, it can feel like there's a lot to learn, not only putting things together on the edit page, but also things with the color page and Fairlight and Fusion and all that stuff. It's really easy to get lost and frustrated, but here's what you need as a beginner. Experience, experience, that's what you need. Now, when I say that, this can feel sort of like trying to get a job in retail when you don't have retail experience. It's like, how am I supposed to get editing experience if I don't know how to edit? How am I supposed to figure out how to do color if I don't know how to do color? Here's how, here's the technique. Open up Resolve and make a new project. Just call it Practice One and hit Create. This will be an empty project. Then you need some footage. Footage can come from one of two places. One, footage you shoot. Two, footage somebody else shoots. This one takes time and energy. This one, you either have to know somebody or find a reputable source. We'll talk about this one in just a second, but let's focus on you for a minute. If you're gonna use your own footage, the important thing is to get out there and shoot. So here I have a bunch of clips and this isn't from anything that impressive. These are just clips of my kids playing with chickens. And they were shot on a nice camera with nice lenses, but it doesn't have to be. This can be footage from your phone. This can be anything. It literally does not matter. But we get some footage somehow. For this footage, I need to set some settings. So I'm just going to hit Control A and select all of these. Right click and go to Clip Attributes. I have some fancy things to set here, namely this pixel aspect ratio. And hit OK. That's going to fix that resolution for me. We also have some color management to do here. If you shoot in log, practice getting your color management set up. This is really, really important if you want good colors. I have a video on color management and how the heck all that works right here. But what we can do is go down to our project settings and this settings cog right here, go to color management, switch from YRGB to DaVinci YRGB color managed, uncheck automatic color management, switch color processing mode to HDR DaVinci wide gamma intermediate and hit save. That's gonna put this into color managed mode. And if you're shooting raw, it's going to automatically detect it. If not, you can right click and there's gonna be an input color space option right here. In fact, let me switch to some other footage so we can go through that process. I'm just going to open up some footage here. It's gonna ask me about a frame rate. I'll change that. And this is footage that I got from a site called Artlist. They were kind enough to sponsor this video. And every time they're like, hey, we'd like to sponsor a video, I say, okay, because we seriously use Artlist all the time for so many things. It's just not that big a deal for me to tell you about them. They're pretty much a one-stop shop for stock media. And nearly everything on here is just like breathtakingly amazing. Like, look at this, it's ridiculous. And you can download this clip in 5K, ProRes, in Log. You can practice your color grading on it. They also have a huge collection of sound effects, a huge collection of very good music. This is what we use for all of our videos. They have AI image generation, as well as video generation, and it's just really good. They also have an AI voiceover generator, which is ridiculous. Anyway, you can get a smoke and deal with Artlist. All you have to do is click the link down in the description. Helps me out, you get a great deal. It's just good all around. Anyway, Anyway, so all of this footage is from Artlist. And this again is all in log. So this was shot with S-Log2 and I can select all this footage, right click. And because I'm in the color managed mode in this project already, I can go to input color space, Sony, s gamma S-Log2. And look at that. Now we have beautiful looking colors. It's maybe not exactly how we want it, but it's a really good starting point. So get some footage, throw it into Resolve, practice doing some color management so you have a good place to start and you're not looking at this kind of gray log footage while you're editing, and then start throwing this footage into a timeline. One thing you could do is just select all of this, right click and create new timeline using selected clips and just hit create. I'll hit shift space bar just to zoom out. And now we have all this footage laid out in the timeline. And you can either do it like this, or you can just double click on a clip. Maybe I'll close our inspector here and we can go through the clips, set an in and an out with I and then O. That'll grab just this piece of this clip and I can put it down in the timeline and make my edit. And so practice putting those clips down in the timeline. Now you might be saying, okay, I already know how to do that. I don't care. <laughs> Until you've done this process that I'm talking about like a hundred times, 200, 300 times, you're not going to be that comfortable with it. So put that footage into the timeline and start getting used to just grabbing the footage and moving it around. This is really low stakes. You don't need to make anything super important from this footage. Just try to make some kind of story. 
And so you can kind of think of the order in which you want to show this stuff, right? So we could start with the girl popping up like this, and we can kind of cut this. We can have her working with the dough. We can just cut this a little bit shorter. Her working with her mom here. Her mom looking at her. Maybe we'll just grab that one shot. Looks nice. Yeah, maybe right there. Good. And we can have her talking to her mom. Lots of really good shots here. Close up of cutting the cookies. The cookies that are done. We also have this shot with the cookies done. I think I like that one best. We'll have them eating cookies on the floor. And maybe we can end with that kiss to the forehead. All right. Maybe we'll do this somewhere earlier. I'm gonna move this to the upper track, let's say. But the more that you can actually work with these clips in the timeline and get used to moving them back and forth, I mean, literally just this muscle memory of moving things back and forth, trimming them, the more you can get used to what happens if I take this and I hit delete versus what happens when I hit backspace. This kind of thing where you're actually in the timeline working, that's a really big deal. So don't be afraid to just do the really basic stuff here. I'm just gonna open my old project here so we can kind of skip ahead a little bit. And so all I've done here is arrange the clips into a short story that I think makes sense. But I noticed something is I didn't have a shot of them actually putting the cookies in the oven. So this is a problem that we can sometimes run into is we just don't have the shot. And so I did something tricksy. Perfect. I went to Artlist and I found a different clip of a girl looking at cookies in the oven. And then I went to AI image and video and I threw this into a timeline and I took a still. You can just go up to file, export, current frame is still. And I uploaded this still and gave it a couple of reference images of our main girl here and told it to turn this girl into that girl. And it did a pretty darn good job. I took that and made that into a video that works well enough. And within the edit, we can see that it actually kind of works. Now, if you look close, like it's not perfect, but it works well enough in context. There's so many tools available now. It's just crazy. So now I added that in and now I had this edit. Then I needed some music, which again, I went back to Artlist and I searched for something like wholesome family time. And what's cool is the search is smart. So it will bring things up that's good for wholesome family time. And so here's the song that came up and I threw it in there and it worked pretty well. But we needed something to kind of drive the story a little bit. Now this is nuts. So I went to the AI voiceover and they have all different kinds of voices that you can use. And there's one that is a little kid, little girl voice. And I'm like, oh man, what if we could emulate her voice? And they have a mode here called voice to voice. And what you can do is upload your own voice recording and it will match the performance, but with that person's voice. So here's the VO that I recorded. I was just kind of channeling my inner child here. I love making cookies with my mom. I love making cookies with my mom. I love making cookies with my mom. And then I uploaded this to the voiceover thing and it gave me this. I love making cookies with my mom. I love making cookies with my mom. And it sounds, I mean, so real. Now we have this VO, which I have a lot of control over the performance here. I like making cookies with my mom. I like getting messy. And the best part is eating them after we're done. And I threw that in to make the story. And then this is something else that you can practice too, is cutting your music and bringing the levels down to kind of dip it in volume when that dialogue comes in. This is a really essential skill, is dipping that volume down so that you can hear the voiceover. You can do that a few different ways. The way that I like to do it is to select this and make a couple of cuts, and then you can take the volume line and just push that down. Select these transitions. I'm just holding Control to select both of these and hit Control T. That's gonna add a crossfade transition, and it's going to start at one level and then move it down when you move this down like this. A quick way to fade things up and down great way to dip your music and then we just put the vo underneath it 
And so practicing actually doing that on a project that you don't have to be stressed about, that you're just kind of playing around. So, so helpful. Opening up the mixer and double clicking on the EQ and playing with the EQ. This is just what we call a, a little dip here. This is about where the dialogue sits. And we're just making the music quieter in the frequencies where there's dialogue. Then if we double click on this DY, we can add dynamics to the voiceover, which is basically making the loud parts quieter and the quiet parts louder. Play around with this. Learn how this works. This is so, so important for making good audio. Then as you work through this, you'll probably start to notice problems with the color. Like for instance, her face is really kind of red and bright. So at any point we want, we can switch over to the color page and we can start messing with the colors. And so start asking yourself, okay, what kind of tools do I need to learn in the color page to fix these kind of problems, right? So her skin is a little bit red here. One thing that we can do is use this hue versus saturation curve, which is kind of behind the custom curves here. It's right over here. It's this third little icon here. I can click on her forehead and just kind of drag like that. And that's going to make control points here on these curves. And I can take the saturation of the reds down a little bit. I can just kind of bring those down a little. And that's going to take some of the red away from her forehead. So we'll just kind of widen this out a little bit. So here's before and here's after. So it really makes a big difference making that skin not be so electric. And maybe that's something we want to add to all the shots. And depending on how into color or how into editing or sound or anything you are, you can decide to go into any of these realms as deep as you want. So I personally love color. And so I'd be practicing things like, how do we make her lips bright red? Well, I could select this with a window like this and track it back and forth. And again, we'll select that hue and really push up those reds for her lipstick. And with now she has bright mom. red lipstick. With my mom. Maybe that's a little too strong. We could take this and go to our key output and take that gain down and kind of split the difference if we want. How do we fix this shot that looks a little bit too green compared to these other shots? We can take the tint a little bit towards magenta, kind of flip in between these shots and get used to fixing them, right? Maybe take the temperature a little bit cooler. How does that look? But this kind of exercise of putting together a small story, I mean, this is only a 20 second story, just with footage that you have or footage that you get online or get from a friend, throwing some music under it, throwing a VO under it, and just making this little tiny story. Oh my goodness, you learn so much doing this. And the biggest encouragement that I can give you is start the project and bring it all the way to its finish, okay? So go through and do a full color grade and make sure it's how you like it. Do a full mix. Make sure it sounds good. Add things in Fusion if you want to. Get really picky with your colors and then go to deliver and actually render this out and look at it on your TV and look at it on your phone. Try different render settings and experiment. I guarantee you if you make one of these little projects every week, you're gonna learn resolve faster than you could ever imagine. It all comes down to practice and it doesn't have to be that fancy. If you want a great place to get all the stuff you need to do this practice, footage, music, and even generating voiceover, here's a link to get a smoking deal for Artlist right there. There's also a link in the description. I hope you actually do this because it's so, so helpful for upskilling your editing, color, mixing, compositing, all of it. All you gotta do is this on a regular basis and you will get awesome at DaVinci Resolve.